Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar will be about painting realistic portraits in Clip Studio Paint presented by Karina Klinghammer. Before we begin the webinar, there are some housekeeping items that we'd like to go through. The webinar will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. Question and answer session will be during the last 15 minutes of the webinar. Attendees can ask questions in the GoToWebinar question box right away. Due to time constraints, not all questions will be answered. The webinar will be recorded. The recording will be shared on social media and will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees. The panelists for this webinar are Mario Quinones, myself, Joanna Brower, and Karina Klinghammer. For those of you who are joining us for the very first time or have never heard about Clip Studio Paint, Clip Studio Paint is your all-in-one solution for stunning, ready-to-publish illustrations, comics, manga, and animations. Learn more at clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. And with that, we'd like to pass the reins of the webinar to Karina and her presentation, Painting Realistic Portraits in Clip Studio Paint. Thank you so much. So, hello everyone. I hope you can understand me. Welcome to my webinar, Painting Realistic Portraits in Clip Studio Paint. I am Karina Klinkhammer, on social media better known as Black Laria. You can find me on Instagram, ArtStation and Twitter. I, pa I paint since I was a child and I always loved drawing the human face. And uh, so it might be no wonder I have quite a lot of portraits in my portfolio. I have a special love for Maymets and underwater sceneries, as you can see, but I also started to paint landscapes recently. I paint with Clip Studio Paint since 2019, so about two years now. Um, as I already said, I have a special love for portraits. Last year, I made a 30 portrait challenge. I painted a portrait every day for 30 days in a row. You can see the results here. It was quite an exhausting challenge, but I learned so much with this challenge. Each portrait took me around two to five, uh, two to four hours to finish. In this webinar, I, I will explain you how to paint a portrait in a realistic way in Clip Studio. My main subject Subjects will be color and lights and how to paint skin. So let's start. So first of all, we of course need a reference photo. I recommend always using reference photos. Even professionals uh, are using them. It's not a shame. You learn a lot more with using reference for your artworks. Have a look at these photos. It's the same model and pose but with a different lightning situation. It's important to make up your mind about the light situation because this directly affects the mood of your painting. For this webinar, I have chosen this one here. Well, <laughs> it has a great value range and interesting highlights and it's not too light or too dark. So um, now I want to introduce you to my workspace. Uh, you can see it looks quite empty. That's because I, ha uh, I hide all the tools. So I have more space and I use the Wacom Express key to open my tools. Uh, in Clip Studio Paint, the tools open where my pen, nip, uh, pen tip is located. Like uh, this, for example, here's my um, layer tools my layer tool now. Uh, this means much shorter ways and this is quite ergonomic as well. And this is how I, 
this is how I arrange my workspace for painting portraits. On the left side, I have my reference photo. And in the middle, I have two smaller versions of my sketch. So this is my sketch bigger. And on the right side, uh, there is my painting area as I'm right-handed. Uh, by the way, the finished illustration, a little spoiler, will look like this. Yeah, um, an illustration, a portrait like this will take me around six hours to finish. So of course I cannot show you the whole process in this webinar. But now let's start painting. First of all, I open a new layer and you might have recognized I use a paper texture under my sketch layer. I don't like to start on a white canvas as every color looks quite dark on a white background. Uh, besides, in my opinion, digital art tends to be too smooth. So having some basic texture is a good starting point. So I have already made a new layer under my sketch layer. Now I block in a base color. I search for middle tone color matching the background color of the reference. In this reference, we have a coolish gray color, um, but I want to have a bit more vivid color for my background. Mm. So here's my color wheel, maybe something like, something like this. And I use a special brush for that, this one here. That's a color jitter brush. Uh, what's that? I show you my brush settings. Here they are. And here you can see the color jitter. Um, you can uh, you can just click here to activate it. I show you what happens now. Here, I hope you can see that. This brush already has some color variation. So I'm just filling in the color on my whole ca canvas. It can be totally messy, that doesn't matter. We want some uh, texture, so it doesn't need to be perfect. Now I go, go to my layers and I set it to multiply and reduce the opacity a bit. So we have still have a little paper texture visible. Now a life changing tip, at least this was for me, color your sketch layer. Um, first of all, uh, lock the transparent pixels. You can do this here. And then I use, I often use a dark red color for that something like that. And I just overpaint it with another brush. You could also use the filling tool for that, but actually I'm too lazy to change my tools. <laughs> and this works as well. And I also recommend keeping transparent pink suits on the sketch layer, as it also prevents you from drawing on the sketch layer by accident, which happens quite a lot to me. <laughs> now I add a new layer and I block in my base color for the skin with the same brush. Mm. If I would just use the colors I can see on the reference photo and just pick it, for example, like this color here and uh, would use it, it would look awful. It's totally muddy gray, it has not any depth in it. 
Um, instead, I use a more saturated color. Let's have a look, uh, a closer look on the reference. Can you see this reddish color here on her, on her cheeks, like here, for example, or on her nose, or this orange color here? Here on her neck, we even have some bluish and greenish colors. Let's take these colors and ex exaggerate them a bit. So I take, yeah, I take a saturated orange color. And I just fill in. Oh, that's the wrong. I want to have the color digital brush. Am I on the wrong? Ah, here. So, no. Uh, for the shadows, I, lose a, I use a slightly darker tone already. And can be very rough. No details at this stage. Uh, it's a bit too dark. For her hair, for her hair, I want to use another color, maybe something a bit more violet. Something, uh, something like that. And I already paint some highlights. For that, I pick a lighter color, but not too light yet. So we already have some basic shadings. can see here on the reference photo, the light is falling on her shoulders and on her forehead and on her hair. So just need the color for her hair now, a lighter color, maybe something like that. Remember keeping the colors exaggerated at this stage. Mm, I think I want to make the background color a bit more blue. Maybe something like that. If I don't use so much pressure, you can see the underneath layer. Okay, so I don't leave it like that, of course. So next step, another layer. So I'm using basic, basically the same brush now, but without the color jitter. And here's a little trick now. For example, I pick this color here with the eyedropper tool, and then I open my color wheel and choose the complementary color. This is the color just at the opposite of the wheel. And I desaturated a bit, uh, a little bit. And now I overpaint the colors. You see? 
If you don't use too much pressure, the colors underneath, underneath shine through the layer. I just do that with all the parts of the skin. Let me just check, okay. Again, I color pick this color, use the complementary color, and overpaint it. Again, don't, don't invent too many details yet, just be rough. I always work from bigger shapes to smaller shapes, so adding details will be one of the last steps. So I add a new I add a new layer now. Now the fun part begins. We are actually start painting the skin. And now I use a softer brush. Uh, you probably haven't seen it. It's this one. It's very soft. And now I paint with muted colors and avoid highly saturated colors. And just overpaint again. Again, not too much pressure. As we want to preserve the colors from the layers underneath. I'm just working my way for this. So this is the most time consuming step. I can't show you the whole press process in this webinar. But at least at least a little bit of it. Sometimes I use more pressure, like on a forehead, because I want to have this bright white light. So this already looks much more like skin, doesn't it? And if you have a closer look, you can still see, at least in some parts, the layers lying under it. So I could uh, take forever for this uh, step. Um, for the portrait, I needed around six hours, I think. Uh, most of the time was for rendering the skin and the hair and so on. Here we can use a little more gray color. No, that's a bit too dark. Yeah, I think you understand what I mean.
So now it's time to use my other brushes as well. Of course, I would take much longer time for rendering here everything. Um, but of course, I don't have the time now to show you everything. Just to give you a short impression how I am working. So, you probably can see the pores here on her nose and on her cheeks. I use um, a special brush for that. I can show you a bit larger. It just looks like that. I can intim intimate the pores with them. But just use it gently, not too much, not everywhere. Make it smaller now. Yeah. So I get a nice texture for a skin. I always keep changing my brushes while working. I have a different one as well. This is a little bit smoother. Maybe a bit too smooth. Um, for sharp lines, like here on her forehead, I like to use the lasso tool like this. And now I fill in my color to the edge. And if I invert the selection, yeah, it works. Yeah. I really get crisp, sharp lines at my edges. Just like that. Now we have a really sharp line here. Because it's important to have both soft and hard edges in your painting. Just observe your reference around her eyes. Lips and nose are harder uh, edges. And on her cheeks and forehead, neck, we have softer, we have a softer surface. So as I already said, this is the most time consuming step. So just take your time, don't hurry. You might have wondered, wondered why it is so difficult to paint the skin in a realistic way. That's because the surrounding colors reflect on the skin, especially on pale skin. And there is no specific color palette for skin. It tends to be pinkish because of the capillaries, but it can change completely depending on the surroundings. I have some other examples for you. 
Oh, huh. There are still my errors. Oh no. <laughs> so. And this photo, the model is surrounded by green nature. So. You can clearly see in her face the re the reflection of the green meadow, like here. It's really a greenish color. And you can see it here. Here as well, or here. Blah. <laughs> Here's another example. Here, the orange colors from the sand are reflected on her, on her skin. Here and here, there are many parts reflecting. However, darker skin doesn't reflect as much as pale skin. As pale skin. This is because it is darker and darker colors absorb incoming light more than pale skin. So we don't have such a strong reflection. Here are another two examples with very dramatic lightning. So we have a really total pinkish color. Or in this example, it's even green color. You wouldn't expect to look a color this. Uh, you wouldn't expect skin color to look this green. And this just depends on the light source. We have, of course, this very green light here, which is reflecting. Back to my work. <laughs> I haven't done the shoulders yet. Shame on me. No, I need a softer brush. Have you seen this? Part here. It appears a bit more orange. Um, every object in a scene that receives strong light, like the shoulders here, becomes its own light source. And in this case, her shoulders. Uh, in this case, the shoulders um, becoming the light, its own light source, and the light bounces up here. So we're doing that as well, just using some orange color here. And here on her nose as well. No, oh, that's a bit exaggerated. Uh, for the very dark parts, avoid using black color. This always looks gray and muddy. I like to lose uh, to use a violet color because this makes nice contrast to the warm skin colors. When I start painting the details, I also start painting over the sketch layer, not under it anymore.
don't overuse these dark colors though, otherwise your work will just get dark. Too dark. Okay. Sometimes I'm using lasso tool for skin parts as well, like this here. Okay, I think this, I have shown you enough of how to paint skin because uh, as I said, it would take forever to finish it. So I already have prepared some sketch I can show to you. So again, sketch layer, then I added the base color, uh, rough underground painting. I darkened the background a bit. And then I started to paint over more and more details. So as I said, the portrait took me about six hours. So this doesn't happen in like 20 minutes. Okay, and here is already started painting the hair. And you might have recognized I haven't overpainted everything especially here on her neck. If you want to have a more painterly look, don't be, don't be too perfect. Let others see your brush strokes and how you build up your painting. For the hair, I recommend to paint not too many details. First, I make my reference picture very small now. So you can't see the details anymore, but you can see, you can divide her hair into two parts, like this and that. Highlights and shadows, it's very easy here. And I'm going to draw the flow of the hair. Can you see it? like this. So I start with a rather big brush. Again, my soft brush, yes. And I just block in the main shapes. After blocking in the main shapes, I add some little hair strands. Another bit lighter color with a smaller brush.
and I really like using my texture, br texture brush on her hair as well. <laughs> yes, you probably recognized I really like having textures in my paintings. Oh, and don't forget these little hair strands here at her hairline. Therefore, I have another brush for smaller details. It's a bit sharper. This is also a nice trick to get some realistic look without painting every hair strand. I mean, using this texture brush here. So, okay, this is very rough now. If you want to see how it looks like, if I take some little more time and afford to it, you can see it here. And here. So it's time for some finishing touches. I can show you what I've done. So um, I corrected some imperfections. Um, I thought her nose looks a bit, a little too big. So I used the mesh tool. You can find it uh, here, transform, mesh transformation. First of all, I use this. And now you can change parts. Uh, for some glowing colors, uh, I use a color dodge layer. Just set it to color dodge and use a rather dark color because it's a very strong effect. And then you can make your colors shine a bit. And at the end, I always, I always use uh, adjustment layers. By the way, I haven't shown you my quick assess, mini, uh, quick assess so far. Here I have uh, every menu, every tool I use. What I don't have on the key yet. And yeah, for example, um, we have a color balance layer. You can change the change the colors with that a little bit, make it more blue, greenish, just what you prefer. Can even change the shadows. Yeah. And I always, uh, you probably re probably already recognized it. Um, I made the whole canvas lighter. I always tend to paint too dark. I don't know why. <laughs> so I'm always lightening up my whole painting. You can find this here, correction layer, brightness, contrast. Oh, it didn't work. Layers, no correction layer. Hmm. Ah, here it is. And then I'm on the wrong layer. Hmm. What's that annoying? And 
uh, finally, I sharpen my layer. You can sharpen it. It's also, it's in the filter menu here, sharpen. Okay, now it's too sharp, too sharp, of course, because I already have sharpened it. So yeah, this is my final result. I made a little overview of the steps for you. So I started with a sketch layer, base color, base colors for her skin and hair, complementary colors. And then I used soft brush to actually paint her skin. And finishing touches. Here are the resources I used for this webinar. A big thanks to the creators. And here is a list of brushes I used. And as it was not possible for me to show you the whole process of the painting in this webinar, I recorded a little time-lapse video for you. So in the last minute, I will show you my time-lapse video. Ah, uh, where is the time lapse function? Ah, uh, yeah. Ah, uh, but that's the one here. <laughs> Export time lapse. Stop. We want to have it 60 seconds. And let's start. Yeah, that was it. Thank you so much for your attention and thanks to Graphicsly for this great opportunity. So now I'm ready for answering some questions. Well, first of all, Karina, thank you so much for today's presentation. Uh, it's been like a masterclass about uh, creating portraits. Everybody loved it. And there are so many questions regarding brushes. I think, well, you already shared uh, a little bit about uh, source, sources, but first of all, we'll go through some um, other questions regarding to your background. What's your academic background? Um, I studied fine arts in Germany in Leipzig um, for six years. Um, subjects were like uh, anatomy, painting and drawing, landscapes and still lifes. Uh, yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and also people is wondering, what are your art references, painters, books? Um, my, my references, uh, I uh, you mean what my inspiration is or what mm -hmm. artists inspire me? Um, Yes. A lot. So <laughs> Instagram has so many great artists. Um, one of my favorites are, for example, Devine Elle Kurtz, Louis, Jamila Knopf, Anna Steinbauer, Sarah Buchholz, Elisa. But there are also some traditional artists I like, like Käthe Kollwitz, Egon Schiele, Lucian Freud, or Hans Holbein the Younger. Mm -hmm. And um, would you recommend a specific book to somebody who's starting on, on realistic painting? 
Uh, oh yes, um, I really can recommend uh, Color and Light by James Gurney. This is a really fantastic book if you want to go deeper into the uh, theme about um, how light works in different situations. Um, so I, I also recommend it for beginners because he really tells a lot of basics. Um, and But you can also use it if you're already advanced. Uh, I learned quite a lot in this book. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And um, well, regarding the um, Clip Studio, well, everybody is amazed how you organize Clip Studio. So, <laughs> um, could you tell us about why did you customize it this way? How are the palettes appearing and disappearing? Are you using shortcuts? Uh, because there's a lot of questions. Why why you decided to go this way on the on the layout <laughs> of the software? Uh, yes, it was, uh, as I said, I started uh, painting with Clip Studio 2019 and um, I thought like, well, I want to have a short way. I always thought like, how can I optimize my workflow? And it just developed, developed over the time. So at the beginning I had um, the layers and, uh, and uh, the color wheel and so on on my right side and um, the tools on the left side so like it is uh, normally and when I bought myself a screen tablet I recognized um, making long movements with my arm is very exhausting therefore my tools uh, went to the right side and yeah I just recognized uh, I can open this brushes uh, with a short key by accident actually. I just tried out some short keys if they could help me uh, to get a better and more efficient workflow and I just thought oh this is great so I don't have to move my arm around everywhere it just pops out here. Um, mm -hmm. And then I thought uh, yeah, they just they just developed. Uh, I thought mm, maybe there are other uh, functions I can put on shortcuts as well. And the Wacom Express key has I don't know 16 to 18 sure. short keys uh, buttons. Right. So uh, I can put quite a lot of menus uh, onto it. And mm -hmm. every uh, button has a function in Clip Studio for me. And uh, yeah, I think especially having the color wheel everywhere or uh, to rotate my canvas easily. For... Pardon? Uh, sorry, Karina, do you use a shortcut for uh, showing up the, the color wheel? Uh, yes, yes. So it just pops up with a short key. Uh huh. And, awesome. Uh, yeah, what I really like is how I can zoom in and out. I uh, click a button and mm -hmm. then I move my pen around um, up uh, up and down and then it's zooming in and out. The same works with rotating the cameras. And this is so, this, this feels so just like I have a touch screen. Uh, um, <laughs> it's even more efficient than working with a touch screen. So, uh, Working on iPad is uh, not as efficient as working with my uh, screen tablet, actually. Mm -hmm. and, and some people ask, like, what's the decision on, on adding the extra uh, visualization windows, uh, having the artwork uh, flipped on one side and the other? What's what's the decision beneath that? Um, so if I am working on details on my um, painting, I don't have an overview over uh, over the whole painting. So, uh, and I can get lost into details, and then I zoom out and see, oh my God, this doesn't work at all in this whole painting. But with this small overviews, um, I always have, I always see what I'm doing actually, um, and. The flipped version is especially uh, good.
good if I'm sketching so I can spot an anatomy mistakes more easily, but also later on when I'm coloring it, I just see mistakes uh, very, very quick. Mm -hmm. And you, you mentioned that you study fine arts, right? Yes. And was it difficult, the transition from a traditional medium to a digital art? Hmm. Um, yeah, it was. Um, I I have some experiences in working with digital art programs from ten years ago. So I uh, I manipulated photos uh, with other programs, and so I already was used to digital painting programs. Uh, of course, uh, working with Clip Studio was new for me and I had to learn new functions and uh, I had to learn how how the how I can use the tools, how the brushes feel because uh, finding the finding the one good brush or good brushes uh, is kind of difficult. Mm -hmm. And it was um, a lot of try and error, so it took me some time. Um, let's say around a year or something like that um, to find my current workflow. But actually, it's not that different from painting traditionally. So this, um, the way I work with these layers and this colorful layer uh, lying under the other layers, this is kind of a traditional way of painting. Mm -hmm. So it was not that difficult for me, actually. And now that you mentioned the brushes, let's go deep into the brushes because everybody's asking. <laughs> let's go deep into the brushes, <laughs> yes. Yes. So do you use default brushes? Do you download? Do you purchase? Do you create your own brushes? What's your workflow on the brushes? So the only devil brush is the watercolor splash brush. I don't use it that often, but sometimes for backgrounds or some little details, it's really nice. Uh, I can show you the brush. It's, I mean, it's so fantastic. Uh, it's a bit that's slow. a default yeah. brush, right? Yeah, that's the default brush. It, um, the new update, which came out in May, I think, or June, mm -hmm. um, they included this brush and it's it's so for, for especially for watercolor paintings this is really nice um otherwise i bought a brush pack from friendin here is the link it has over uh, 800 brushes and many brushes are uh, nicely textured that are these brushes here from dry brush to uh, think these and these here. Uh, yes, I, I really can recommend this brush pack. It's really great. Uh, and then I have some skin uh, brushes. They are from a brush pack from Paintable. And uh, this is from Clip Studio Sets, this pencil brush. However, um, I always like to change my brushes uh, to, I like to improve them. So I, mm -hmm. so these brushes are not exactly the brushes I downloaded. Right, you customize uh, them. Yes, I customize them. And in future, I probably make some own brushes because it's always like, I'm not 100 person uh, satisfied with the brushes I uh, download or I bought. So yeah, I probably will release a, an own brush set. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And um, some other question regarding painting. What are the most difficult realistic things to paint? Is it fabric? Is it liquid? Is it? What do you think is the most difficult thing to imitate? Uh, for me personally, um, 
fabric is, I think that's some more difficult. Uh, I struggled painting hair for a long time, but then I just recognize it's not that difficult if I don't draw every single hair. Instead, I just uh, divide it into bigger shapes. And I somehow struggle painting lips. <laughs> I don't know why, it's just uh, uh, I need quite a lot of time painting lips. <laughs> I haven't figured out why. <laughs> and um, and regarding painting leaks, because if you show us some references, where do you find your references? Um, in the website, in, in, in the internet, you take pictures? Uh... Um, of course, in the internet, um, you, you can find some great um, photo packs on ArtStation or Gumroad. Uh, I just Googled uh, to find them. But sometimes I'm also using own references. I've been to Scotland two years ago and I made a lot of uh, photos from the landscape. So uh, kind of all my landscape paintings are based on these photos. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and but also Pinterest for some inspiration is great as well. Mm -hmm. And well, actually, that was my next question. What <laughs> inspirates you? What are what, what are the things that make you choose one subject or the other? That's a difficult question. Hmm. Uh, if I don't have inspiration, I just draw a portrait. <laughs> so this always works. And then sometimes uh, I come to other ideas, like I want to uh, paint other things. So I already said in my introduction, I like to paint mermaids. This is based on, um, I, I, I paint and draw mermaids since I was a child. Uh, I always loved this blue colors, this flowing hair, and yeah, just this underwater feeling. Uh, I also like to go swimming. That's that might be a reason as well. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, if I go for a walk, uh, this also helps me to find new ideas. Um, especially walking in green nature. This, yeah. Uh, and I, I'm also sometimes uh, painting on childhood memories, like this one here. It's called St. Martin's Day. Um, this is based on a memory from my childhood. Um, where in Germany, we have this day where we all go around with our lanterns in the night. Mm -hmm. And this was uh, really exciting for me to be out at night and to see uh, this dark sky and it was so beautiful with all the lanterns. So childhood memories is uh, definitely an, an inspiration for me. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. And well, time flies and uh, we're reaching the end of our webinar. So before we go, one last question or... Um... An advice. What would you advise to somebody who started into uh, tradition and traditional painting or digital painting, in specific portraits, uh, who's having trouble uh, imitating lights or, or getting the, the most of it? Um. Okay. Um. Yeah. My tip is using big brush strokes. This sounds uh, crazy, but uh, if you use a bigger brush, brush stroke, you have to concentrate on the whole painting and not just on small details. I think this is really um, a mistake I myself did and many beginners did. They just jump into the details without seeing the whole painting. And then they paint and paint and paint all the details and then they get frustrated because the whole painting doesn't work. So, um, Using just a bigger brush is uh, a good advice, I think. Mm -hmm. And practice and practice, isn't it? That's of course, that's always... <laughs> uh... 
yeah, you um, you always have to practice. I myself practice still a lot, so you can always learn. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, before we go, let me just uh, share one last bit of information. So thank you so much again. Um, Karina for today's presentation, everybody loved it. And, and we also want to thank all of the, the attendees who are been following us or who have been sharing uh, on Instagram their stories about the, the webinar. Uh, so thank you so much, Karina, for today's presentation. Thank you. <laughs> it was really awesome. <laughs> No, it was great. Everybody loved it. We are sorry that we couldn't answer all of the questions, but hopefully um, we got most of them. Uh, just a reminder that this webinar has been recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube channels, Clip Studio Paint channel and Graphicsly. And to learn more about Clip Studio Paint, please visit clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. And also for more information about Karina and her projects, Follow her on social media, Instagram as Black Claria, Twitter, and our station. Uh, so with that, thank you so much again, Karina. Yeah, thank you so much for this opportunity. This was really great. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, we loved it. And thank you all who joined us. We'll see you in our next event. So stay tuned in our social media. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.